Okay, it's time to do another short video, and uh, this right here is going to be a little more in-depth as far as detail. Um, this is a 2005 Avalanche that came in. Customer had just bought it. It's only had it for probably not even a week. Um, there's multiple things that don't work. Um, he noticed that if he had the ignition switch in certain positions, um, he could get the door, the windows to work, the radio to work. But if it was in the run position, certain things wouldn't work, like the doors, the radio, the climate control, the 4x4. And there's a few other things that wouldn't work as well. So a after asking a few more questions, there's some things that we can put together uh, these puzzles to this, uh, or pieces to this puzzle, so we can get down to what's going on here. Um, there's multiple problems. Another issue that he had mentioned was his cluster uh, wasn't working properly. When it was sitting here with the car, with the truck off, um, the speedometer was reading 25 miles per hour. So obviously that's a mechanical issue and uh, those clusters are known for having problems. We've already rebuilt this by the time this video is being done. Um, put all new um, motors in there as well as illumination bulbs. That's a separate issue and we're probably not gonna do a video on that because there's plenty of them out there on rebuilding these clusters. But getting back to the other problem, um, he replaced the ignition switch because he thought perhaps that was a problem because he noticed it would work at certain times when he was in certain positions, um, but that didn't solve the problem. Now, another piece to this puzzle is when it was running, you could not communicate with any module on this, uh, on this vehicle. There's, there's many. Um, this is a module here. It's considered the front door module. Uh, this, the cluster is considered a module. We have the ABS module, which is on the frame right below the, the driver's seat here. Um, you have the powertrain control module. You have the airbag module. All these modules communicate on what's called a serial bus. Um, it's a class two GM, class two serial bus. And each one talks to each other and they share information. Um, as I mentioned, we could not communicate with any of them. But if you turn it back in the accessory position, you could communicate with them. And there was all kinds of communication codes in many modules. So with all these symptoms that we're having here, that leads me to believe that there's a problem with the, the information bus, the communication. So that's where we need to go in order to figure this out. Um, GM conveniently has what's called a splice pack. And this one was located up under here. And what it is is, all the modules that communicate, um, the majority of them go to this splice pack. Their information line goes to that pack and there's what's called a comb that connects them all together. So if you can remove that comb, you have access to each individual module all in one spot. Okay, so that you just saw a picture of the splice pack. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the voltage that's on this uh, information bus and I'm tapped in right here with the voltmeter at the data link connector. As you can see, 10 volts, a little over 10 volts. That's not good. Okay, so the information bus, class two, it uses a seven volt signal and it toggles that variable pulse width modulation. And that's how it communicates by sending a square wave. And we're gonna show you what it's doing right now using the Pico scope, which is a software lab scope. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. This is, this is the modules trying to communicate, but we could see here this abnormal line. That's where that high voltage is being dumped on the line. So if we open this up a little bit, we can see it's going a little crazy. Okay, so once that splice pack is uh, removed, that, that comb out of the splice pack, um, each individual module could be tested right there. So what I found was on pin C of that, uh, of that splice pack, it was, uh, that's, the, that's the terminal that was uh, putting out 10 volts. You trace that back on the electrical schematic and that goes to the electronic brake control module. So the easiest thing at this point would be to unhook the ABS control module and see if that goes away. Um, and that's exactly what happened. So there's a fault inside of the ABS control module that is causing voltage to be put on the, the data line. Um, and in turn, that is disrupting all communication. So you can kind of think of it um, like all the modules are on a, a conference call and they're trying to communicate and talk. 
but the ABS module decides to jump on the line as well and start screaming and gets everybody all confused if you want to look at it that way. But I'm going to unplug that so you can see and have it return back to normal. Okay, so this is now the proper way that the data uh, line should look. So we'll open this up some. These are the modules communicating. This is all serial data. We can see how it's got a nice clean look to it. What you saw before is gone as far as that voltage spike. Um, so now everything's functioning. Radio. Climate control down there, all the gauges are working, which before they weren't working, um, and everything seems in order. Now one thing to keep in mind is um, I can't cover everything in this video. Um, there's, there's just too much to cover and too many things that could happen. Uh, but if you ever have a question, just, just ask. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that these modules can have power, they can have proper grounds, but if they don't communicate, that's when things start getting weird. For instance, the door, uh, uh, the driver door module had power, had ground, but because it didn't have anything on the communication wire, it didn't operate. So same thing with the instrument cluster, it would light up, but you had no gauges, there was no voltage, there was no oil pressure, uh, there was no fuel, uh, there was no temperature. So the reason why that is, is uh, you will have a sensor, like let's take for instance the oil pressure. That gets sent to the, the PCM or the powertrain control module. From there, it disperses the information to whatever module requests it, like the instrument cluster. So it would still light up, but it would not receive any information to run the particular gauges. So you can't let that throw you off in your diagnosis. Um, again, uh, you can go to the comb pack, remove that, and you'll be able to see uh, very quickly if there's a module that's uh, shorted to power or sending power out on this line, which it should be seven volt, as we can see here on our scale, uh, whereas before it was dumping over 10 on it. Just a video to give you some information on the GM class two serial data and what it can do when things go wrong, uh, what to look for.